Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, or Joao. Huh? I don't know if the pronunciation is, is correct. Huh? <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you, first of all, to uh, all organizers. Uh, I mean, the FUNSEAM, of course, and the University of Barcelona. And a special thank you to Dr. Maria Teresa Costa Campi, who invited me, and so we've been knowing each other for a few years. But I must uh, say that I'm very uh, honored to be uh, with you to, to, today. Uh, thank you also for the place, because I must admit that uh, such a place, which is a capital of architecture um, <coughs> in the world, is uh, quite an interesting place to organize a, a conference like that. Thank you for the weather, of course. It's a change. It's a change for my uh, Nordic country, even if it's not too far away. One hour flight in Paris, the weather is not the same, I can tell you. It's very gray and rainy. And thank you also for the level of participants who are on the stage, of course, and, and in the room. I'm really impressed. After the thank you, for my apologies, of course, because I don't speak Spanish. I'm very sorry about that. And before starting my presentation, I have uh, one question for you. And it is, what is the most difficult situation, you think, for me? It is to speak after lunch <laughs> or speak another native language than yours. Yes, I'm in both horrific situation. Uh, this is the reason why uh, I thought I had to prepare a few slides to focus your attention to uh, what I will say. So let's see. It works. Good. A uh, table of contents, uh, very briefly, since I have 15 minutes and not more, I will uh, go to an introduction to European energy regulators. As, as it was said uh, previously, uh, I work in the uh, French energy regulator, but I happen to be also the chair of these uh, consumers and retail markets working group have been for a few years dealing with these specific issues, so I'd like to uh, speak on the European perspective and not only from uh, the French perspective, of course. Um, I, I will go to our vision, which has been presented more globally, our holistic vision in a bridge to 2025 document that was released in September 2014. Why we need a new market model, I think you had already many presentations on that this morning, and probably uh, the people around the table are more competent than I am to explain why we need a new market model. Um, however, uh, I would like to develop the key feature of what is or what would be a new consumer-centric energy model. And I have a few words about some core work that we have at the Council of Energy, of European Energy Regulators, on energy retail market issues this year. So first of all, sorry uh, to bother you with this, but we have two separate organizations within European energy regulators. It were, they were mentioned, by the way, by Dominique Ristori this morning, bo both of them. We have on one side the Council of European Energy Regulators, which I represent today, and on the other side, the Agency for the Cooperation of Energy Regulator, ACER. ESA is the official institution as a European agency created uh, as an implementation of a third package uh, of directive. It is operational since a few years, 2011, and presently it has around 80 permanent staff in Ljubljana, Slovenia. Uh, it is uh, governed by um, uh, a board of regulator, which is headed by uh, John Mogg, and there is a director and some staff and the membership of ACER is restricted to EU member states. We could say that as an institution, ACER has specific uh, responsibility, uh, especially regarding cross-border and interconnection, and about the implementation of the internal energy market. On the other side, the Council of European Energy Regulators is a strange animal because this is a non-for-profit organization based uh, in Brussels, uh, which, is, which has been established already 16 years ago. Uh, it has a very small permanent staff, and its work is structured around working groups which are mainly staffed by their members, I mean national regulatory authorities, from Europe. So we are the voice of Europe's national energy regulators at EU as well as international level outside of, of Europe. 
and uh, our work focus on, you know, I mean, we have a broad range of issues that we covered, but we mainly focus on what ESA doesn't do uh, to avoid duplication of work, of course, and it is mainly about retail markets and consumers, as well as international cooperation. Okay, see, uh, oops, sorry. CR, who we are, who do I represent today? Um, the vast majority of EU member states, uh, 27 of them, as well as Iceland and Norway uh, as regulators. We also have observers, national regulatory authorities from Switzerland, the former Yugoslavian uh, Republic of Macedonia, and Montenegro and Kosovo, which are the new members. Today we have uh, then 33 members and observers. And um, the uh, membership is growing, just to give you an idea of who we represent. So our vision uh, was established and released uh, in September 2014. It is called the CASO Bridge to 2025 vision, a holistic vision around key pillars, five key pillars, and the one, two, four that you can see represent this joint strategy to shape uh, EU energy policy over the coming decade. The bridge recommendations reflect uh, the regulator's ambition to uh, achieve these five key objectives for the internal energy market by 2025. First is to establish liquid, competitive, and integrated wholesale energy markets. When I say energy for us, it's mainly electricity and gas. This, this is our responsibility. In electricity and natural gas. Uh, second, it's about enhancing the Europe's security of supply and channeling the external element, external to the European Union, of internal energy markets. Number three is moving to a low carbon society with increased renewables and smart and flexible responsive energy supply. Four, it is to develop well-functioning retail energy markets to, benefits, uh, to the benefits of consumers. And five, it's about, for us, a building stakeholder dialogue, and this is part of the dialogue today. Uh, stakeholders meaning the industry, of course, and apart from the industry, the consumer bodies, the representatives of the, the customers, and uh, a, a few others. It is also building cooperation and new government's arrangement for, for ESA, notably, which is, as you know, uh, which may be part of the uh, new organization that Dominique Ristori from the European Commission was referring to this morning. So you see that this vision has been established in, and released in September 2014. And I must say that number one to four on this slide are rather similar to what Dominique said this morning. And I was impressed, finally, that uh, we, we were uh, on the same wavelengths. And maybe we can be proved as a regulator that the Commission has listened to. Uh, in any case, we do share this European Commission uh, vision, uh, which is um, represented by these four elements. In addition to that, uh, I noticed this morning that Dominique mentioned also that um, innovation was uh, part of it. You remember that... In fact, it was part of the Energy Union presentation that we had this morning. The only piece which is missing compared to what regulators said before is really the research, innovation, and innovation aspects uh, where uh, the Commission insists on. Of course, as regulators, we are not uh, focusing on the innovation of the manufacturing industry. That's not our job and more of a job for policymakers than for regulatory bodies. So we do share, European energy regulators do share 100% of the objective uh, of the European Commission to deliver EU citizens with a secure, sustainable, competitive, and affordable energy. In establishing a well-functioning internal energy markets, and maybe we are more uh, focusing on consumers and retail market, and this is what I want to uh, develop now. 
So why we need a new market model? I would say, again, I will uh, use some extract of uh, the Commission um, papers. And I'm referring here to the July 2015 European Commission New Deal communication, what they call the New Deal for Consumers. The European Commission and European regulators uh, highlight concern, first of all, about the functioning of retail markets. It's about the lack of competition, uh, the lack of transparent information for consumers, especially on cost, on consumption in many situations. As a consequence, from a consumer perspective, I'm referring to um, yearly or two yearly surveys uh, made by the Commission showing that the electricity market and the gas market are among the la least performing markets from the consumer per perception, or from the consumer point of view. Of course, this is a very general statement which is um, extracted. I don't mean that the Spanish market is like that. This is just on a more general basis uh, at a European level. So I think we have to have that in, in perspective. And we could also add that in the previous years, we've seen the uh, dramatic increases of energy prices, even if more recently, the fact that wholesale prices have uh, diminished um, in terms of uh, electricity and gas may have been transferred to retail prices. We can see that more generally, the decrease of uh, wholesale prices has not been transferred 100% to, to the uh, retail prices that are um, on the consumer bills. So this is uh, one additional concern. That's the situation. And uh, another one is about the fact that the EU, so that must change, of course. I mean, consumers must be happy with the quality of service and with the prices of, of their energy. And in addition, we can see that uh, there is a, a, an additional complexity, increasing complexity in uh, the uh, generation aspects and the uh, grid management aspects where there may be a need to inform, educate, and engage customers. So how can consumers be at the heart of EU energy markets uh, as a central element? So we are talking about a new energy system for Europe, moving away from an economy driven by fossil fuels, where energy is based on a centralized supply side approach, the traditional supply side approach from the, the, the old times of monopoly, relying also on traditional technology and sometimes outdated business models. Instead, um, the uh, EU energy market should seek a system empowering consumers through transparent information, choice, and flexibility. So how can consumers contribute themselves um, to this new model? It's through three key elements, energy efficiency, demand response, and self-generation. So energy efficiency, of course, it's about the control of all the level of consumption and the use also on the sustainability aspect, on low carbon offers. On demand response, I think you know everything about the fact that the flexibility of consumption would certainly be a plus to manage the uh, energy network and will diminish the cost of the system. And by the way, will make these decentralized uh, energy renewable units uh, more integrated into the grid. So from a system management perspective, it has the potential to reduce the consumption level at times of peak demand and also at times when system reliability jeopardized. Another element or potential element of putting uh, the consumers at the heart of EU energy market is a self-generation. It could be an engagement at individual level. It could also be an engagement at community level, at building level, or even at a city level. That's how we see the uh, consumer central model, which comes with um, some key features. And some key features, one um, 
I mean, one key element is, of course, the access to information for, for customers. Because we can see today that the access to consumption data by consumers, by the way, in, in all other areas, you can imagine that when people pay a bill, they know what their consumption is and what their bill is for. We still have estimated bills in the electricity and gas markets in many countries. Uh, let's say globally that we are uh, or we were in a, in a situation where consumers were getting their information on their mm, consumption data on a yearly basis and with the rollout of smart metering it's coming to monthly information and near real-time frequency coming from the smart metering data for all. We see that as a key pillar of energy efficiency and of the new uh, energy model. The labeling for appliances and the fact for consumers to know what their appliances consume is of course of uh, high importance for them to control more of their consumption when they invest in uh, new equipment. Uh, and again, there is this uh, story about the origin of electricity that people may not be aware of. Demand response to flexible consumption would require the availability as an option of time of use or hourly metering and different pricing schemes from suppliers. Suddenly there is some um, margin for maneuver in, in this situation that we can see that the range of offers to consumers at the moment is very narrow in many uh, EU member states. And um, you, you may only have fixed prices in some member states. You only have flexible prices based or not on spot prices and so on. But I can elaborate on that to us. This is an option issue. Availability of aggregation services from third party companies is also of high importance. And uh, basically that's what it is. <laughs> And I know I need some more time to uh, explain to you that what we think at European uh, Energy Regulator is a prerequisite of well-functioning energy markets, meaning that this will not happen without a high degree of competition and innovation among suppliers and retailers in general. And the fact also that distribution system operators should provide quality services and facilitate a level playing field by acting really efficiently as neutral and efficient market facilitators. Competition and innovation may be a, a prerequisite, but without involved consumers, that won't work. And the first layer probably of awareness, <laughs> which is awareness of a key feature of energy markets, simply that you know that you can switch supplier. I can tell you that there are countries where 50% of uh, consumers do not know what, that they can change uh, their supplier. And of course, that's the minimum knowledge that uh, you can expect if we want to have an, an active um, consumers at the end of it. And this doesn't come without a special protection for vulnerable consumers and um, um, energy um, poor uh, customers need, needing uh, extra protection. So I'm almost finished, just to, uh, I don't know, sorry. Just to give you a flavor of um, what we are doing at the moment at CR level to work on, on this issue. Um, it's about uh, the preparation of a draft roadmap for delivering well-functioning energy retail markets um, by preparing uh, an initial roadmap including harmonized definition throughout Europe of what could be uh, these well-functioning retail energy market in the new uh, energy model along with the key feature, key properties and uh, making uh, national regulatory uh, authorities able to assess uh, on a common harmonized methodology their own uh, markets. And at European level, we work on an update of uh, guidelines of good practice on removing um, barriers to entry in the energy market, because as, uh, as I tried to um, explain, this is our real belief that uh, the new energy model won't work without uh, competition in retail and value-added services. And finally, something which is very prosaic and very concrete is that 
to empower customers, you need some ways of, for them to compare offers. Uh, price comparison tools exist in many countries. Uh, at the moment, they are not really updated to the uh, future world of uh, hourly prices and variable prices. And this is one work that we intend to start and launch this year, of course, in coordination with the suppliers and the price comparison tool uh, providers. So thank you very much.